Okay, we are live. Welcome everyone to our Tommy Research Show for January 5th, 2015. This is the show that will be covering the Week 67 report. So if you haven't had a chance to uh, look at this one yet, go to timingresearch.com slash reports and you can download it there. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to my guest host now, Dave Landry. Thank you, David. I appreciate uh, you having me back, and thanks to Timing Research once again for having me back as uh, the host this week. Uh, starting with you, Larry, tell me a little bit about yourself, and tell me a little bit about PowerCycleTrading.com. Okay, well, thank you, uh, Dave, for having me here today. It's my first time on the show. Uh, basically, I've been trading for over 30 years. I uh, started out my trading career trading cargoes of crude oil back in the 80s, and so that's kind of where I cut my teeth trading. So went on to uh, manage and, and run the international trading desk for a really large oil trading company. Uh, did that for over 10 years out of Bermuda and we got involved in trading all the other various commodities and uh, all the various uh, option markets and mostly a lot of the futures, you know, DAX, everything, you name it. If it moved, we pretty much were trading it. So that's kind of summary of my background from a trading standpoint. Then I started my uh, power cycle trading uh, website. It's an educational website, and uh, I've developed trading systems that we uh, offer our clients and uh, members, and also a lot of e option ed educational courses. And started the site back in about 2010, 2011, really 2011, I guess it is. And so, just been pushing it from there. You know, just really uh, into the educational side. Spent a lot of time on options, and got a nice trading model that you know we've developed for directional trading to help us on our setups and uh, also a scanner for our setups. So that's kind of a general background on myself. Cool. Cool. I like that. I trade anything that moves. I said that at, at a cocktail party recently as an answer. Mm. My wife said that sounded a little flippant, so I had to kind of explain that. I like to trade mostly stocks, but I'll trade anything that moves. So I agree with you uh, wholeheartedly on that. Uh, interesting stuff. All right, Todd, let's go to you. Todd Mitchell of TradingConceptsInc.com. Tell us a little bit about yourself, your trading, uh, and, of course, TradingConceptsInc.com. Uh, Todd's having Todd some, uh, connection difficulties. He, uh, <laughs> he dropped out. He, he should be back on in, in a few minutes here. Okay, we'll talk about him while he's gone, and then, <laughs> then we'll get back to him. Okay, Neil, uh, you're next up. Uh, Neil Batho of TradingReview.net. Neil, is, uh, it's 1 a.m. where you are right now. You're in Thailand, right? Yeah, just just for a bit over here. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds nice. Tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your trading, and tell us a little bit about your website, TradeReview.net. Yeah, well, it's been going for uh, since 2003, actually, and um, we'll trade stocks and we'll do uh, commodities using ETFs, and it's basically a trend following system. And um, I'll go for the higher strength names and specialize basically in uh, the entry point on a stock. So um, you know, I can watch a stock for several months, several years sometimes. And once you get the right entry point, um, I find it can limit your risk, increase your reward. And uh, so I'll have a, usually a pretty tight-knit uh, portfolio for people, approximately three to eight picks at any given time. And um, also specialize in timing the market, so I use various tools um, that a lot of people don't know about that I learned back when I was a stockbroker in '99. Okay, did we um, we hear back from Todd yet? Um, yeah, it looks like he's not back back yet. Okay. So. Well, uh, you know, one thing you said, Neil, that I kind of liked was that uh, you let the market come to you, and I think that's real important. It sounds like you're willing to just uh, sit back and wait. And, and I often tell clients, we're more waiters than we are traders if you think about it, especially if you're trying to get into a, um, a, a short to somewhat intermediate term trend. I'll go ahead and introduce myself real quick. Um, I'm Dave Landry, uh, obviously of DaveLandry.com. Uh, David uh, Cosminer has been uh, kind enough to invite me back over the past few weeks to, uh, to guest host the show. I'm uh, slotted as a swing trader, but I'll stay with a position as long as it moves in my favor. I think you can only predict the short term when it comes to the markets. Um, by putting a longer term trend behind you and looking for a pullback, that's the basis of a methodology. I have a 21-page report on that. If anybody's interested, it covers 
I would say 95% of the methodology and the rest is just some details. So if anybody wants that, uh, let me know. I've been at this for a long time and I've uh, written three books that have been published in seven different languages. Um, okay, uh, how about uh, Todd? Todd, are you back with us yet? or? Yeah, no, he's not. I'll, I'll let you know when he... Okay, all right, cool. Okay, well, uh, Larry, let's go to you and uh, let's start with question number two. Uh, based on any technical or fundamental indicators you want to use, would you guess that the S&P 500 index will move higher or lower this week? And that's uh, between now and Friday. It's close of uh, January 9th. Okay, so what I like to look at, I like to combine the, the seasonalities or seasonals uh, along with my trading model. So right now, just uh, based on the seasonal aspect of the markets, they tend to, in the first, uh, this first week of January, they tend to kind of trend sideways to up. And then it's more towards the middle of January that uh, the markets start to sell off. But it looks like we're starting to, you know, have this happen a little bit earlier. So, you know, basically looking at my model, breaking the, like, just a simple 50, simple moving average on uh, multiple charts like the S&P uh, and some of the other indexes, the, the Dow futures. I think the, that it looks like it's starting earlier, so it looks like the, we're going to trend and pull back a little bit more this week. So if we close below that 50 today, which it probably looks like unless they get some fierce rally towards the end, I think the market looks like it's going to be pushing lower into the week. Now, one thing that uh, to a caveat, though, is you've got that non-farm payroll number on Friday, and that can be a total game changer. I kind of call those kind of numbers a catalyst event, that in the Fed meeting. So that could come out, you know, depending on how the market interprets it, and it could push the market, you know, back the other way hard or continue down. So Yeah. Yeah, we're going to get to the uh, – we'll talk about those in a little while, too, so maybe you can give us a little bit more uh, of your insight on that. Okay, based on your answer, which is down, correct? Yeah. Uh, rate on a scale of 0 to 10, 0 being unconfident, obviously, and 10 being completely confident, um, what's your confidence on uh, on your prediction? I'd give it a 7 right here. I okay. think we're going to start seeing support, though, so, you know, you could start – I like to look at Fibonacci, too, and we're already coming down to pretty key – level today. So that's the trouble with trying to pick market timing. It can all happen in one day and then the next couple of days you reverse and you kind of reversion to the mean type thing. But uh, it looks down right now. I'd say seven, six and a half. Let's put it that way. Six and <laughs> okay. a half. Okay. Um, let's go to uh, Neil while we're waiting on uh, Ty to get his headset uh, hooked up. Okay, Neil, uh, based on uh, any technical or fundamental indicators you want to use, would you guess that the S&P 500 index will move higher or lower this week, and that's between now and Friday's close on January 9th? Well, we're already way down, of course, but I'd have to say down. Okay. And uh, the technicals that I'll use, a lot of people can just chart, you know, the indices, but I'll use an indicator called uh, percent of stocks. So... It'll say what are the percent of stocks in the S&P 500 above their 50 or 200 day moving average. And if you want to find that, you just go to stockcharts.com, type in percent of stocks. And that already started ticking down um, at the end of last week. And so now surely it's going to be way, way lower today. And these tend to go coast to coast. So, you know, the 50 will go from like 10% up to 90%. And so it, it peaked again around 90, and now it's it's reversing down. And so um, I'd have to say down. So we didn't add any new picks um, today. Yeah, one thing I've noticed is that by tracking momentum lists, it seems like those momentum lists get whacked first. And I'm thinking that you're, I'm guessing, if I'm correct, that the, your, the indicator using a moving average is probably picking that off a little bit because those above the moving average are, Trending, is that correct? Well, yeah, so it's like the percent of stocks above a 50-day moving average. So sometimes you'll have the indices holding up if you're in a really bullish environment for large caps and the mega caps like Apple, IBM. These things will move the index, but you'll see this underlying deterioration in this indicator before you would see it if you just charted the index, but obviously market cap weighted which is something that can be kind of dangerous if you're just saying, no, everything you know, looks great on the Dow, looks great on the S&P yeah. 500, but there's massive deterioration that you can't normally see, but you can see it on this indicator. 
Yeah, you always have to dig a little deeper. That's what I believe. Okay, Neil, before I forget, we get too caught up ca talking markets. Uh, based um, uh, on your opinion, uh, rate your confidence in your answer on a scale of 0 to 10. 8. 8. Oh, okay. Eight, Very eight, confident. Eight well, uh, as far as I'm concerned, I'm kind of scratching my head a little bit. I, it's like... Um, I don't like what I see. The fact the market, we had a double top in the S&P and we pulled back below that uh, or we pulled back below the prior breakout peak. And that concerns me. But I think we're already fairly oversold in here. And so I'm going to guess, and I think at this point it's only a guess because I don't have any indicators that are telling me uh, that it will go up. But I'm going to guess that it's going to go up uh, by Friday. And I'm only going to give that a confidence of about six because I don't have a lot of confidence at this point in time. Now, one thing that I am watching, and if anybody wants the patterns, I don't. There's nothing that I do that's proprietary. I, I disclose everything. Um, but I will be watching the moving averages, the boats, what I call the bow tie moving averages, the 10-day simple, the 20-day exponential, and 30-day exponential. When you get across of those three moving averages, pretty quickly, right after market has come off of all-time highs or major highs, let's say multi-year highs, uh, you could get a pretty serious spill. Last time, it only dropped about 8% when it did that, but that's still a significant spill. If we dropped eight percent from here or from the setup, it would be pretty uh pretty ugly. So I'm gonna I'm gonna guess up, but I'm gonna keep an eye on that bow tie sell signal. And once that happens, it's really good idea to pull in your horns a little bit and be really selective on new long positions because not every signal will turn into a top, but every top will have a signal. Okay, I'm just gonna plow through everything and uh, and if uh, Todd gets up and running we'll uh, come back to him. Okay, Larry, you hinted at a few of these things already, so uh, let me um, let me ask. Go ahead and ask the question. What developing events, and they could be technical or fundamental, will you be watching out for this week that might have a positive or negative impact on the S&P 500 and other U.S. markets? Well, the two th key things you, you mentioned in your questions were um, the the minutes from the FOMC on Wednesday. So. Uh, a lot of times, you know, it depends on how the market interprets that, but th that can definitely have a uh, kind of effect on the markets. But the bigger one will be the Friday number, non-farm payroll, and then it's just a matter of the interpretation of it. So, I mean, it, it could go either way. I mean, it depends on where that number is, and I haven't really gone into it. Uh, so that's that's the trouble. If you get too, like right now, if you just look at your te whatever technical indicators you're looking at, the market's rolled over and it's pulling back. But what can happen is that you can get if you start getting into the markets too too late, and you you get caught up and you sell at the bottom, let's say, and you get something like a non-farm payroll that's interpreted as a positive because of whatever, then you can get your you know a short covering rally going reversion to the mean, and you get just you know run right over. So a lot of times, what I think will happen is today we're getting a pretty big sell-off, and a lot of times though you can get into Tuesday, Wednesday, then the markets will start to try to balance out their portfolios kind of getting more neutral as they go into the numbers, so you'll probably start seeing some short covering. So that's the only thing that I could see that pushed the market back up, just kind of getting a little bit more neutral going into that number, then see what that number is, and then that can be kind of an event that can lead to either uh, the next week being an up week or the next week being just a really hard down week. So uh, there are a few numbers uh, that come up, FOMC meetings and non-farm payroll are the two biggies. Okay. Okay, Neil, um, what developing events, and they can be technical or fundamental, will you be watching out for this week that might have a positive or negative impact on the S&P 500 and other U.S. markets? I liked what Larry said about the non-farm payrolls because I think that's probably one of the top three fundamental indicators you're ever going to get in the market, um, that with the unemployment report, of course. Um, so I think if we do get a big sell-off this week, and Larry, I think you said that was on Friday, the non-farm? That's correct. Yeah, so I think that would actually set up a pretty good week where you could have a complete selling off during the week, and then if the non-farm payrolls come out, which is probably going to be a good report, then that can give you know an end-of-the-day rally on Friday. So that would be something to look at if you're going to be short or or whatever, look to cover those shorts. I would probably cover them right before that non-farm payroll. Yeah, that number report. will come out before the market's open. It's at 7.30 central. So, you know, 
Uh, yeah. I think you'll see some short covering before that on, a, say, on a Thursday or something. Okay. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cover your shorts before the close on Thursday. Okay. Uh, I'm purely a technician, but it is kind of fascinating. I like uh, what, what uh, Larry was saying and Neil was saying too about it, maybe you're getting some selling going in, you know, sell first and ask questions later um, going into that number. So that's kind of something that um, I, I don't factor into my trading, but I, uh, it's kind of interesting that that's what might be going on. Um, I'm going to keep an eye on 1975. Obviously, that's our last little pullback that we had in here. One thing that concerns me is that uh, we've had a bit of a, an eternal sunshine in this market since 2009, and, and I just mentioned a sell signal that, that could be a very powerful one, uh, the bow tie short signal, and we had one of those uh, sell signals in October, like I said, and the market dropped 8%, which is not the end of the world, but it's fairly significant, but every time this market has dropped, every time we had one of these signals since 2009, the market has come right back, and I think everybody is uh, pretty excited about the fact that the market has gone up. Um, I had a family member come up to me and tell me how much his 401k is up since 2009. Uh, hopefully uh -oh. that's not. I know, I know, I know, I know. Hopefully oh, that's not boy. a nail. I know. So hopefully that's not a nail in the coffin. So the the point I'm trying to make is, yeah. you have to take these sell signals seriously. So if we do uh, get that bow tie down. Uh, I would be really concerned about it, uh, regardless of what type of event uh, makes that happen. And then the other thing that to think about, too, is um, I'm going to keep, like I said, I'll keep an eye on the 1975 and the S&Ps. The further we get below that, the more of the Johnny come lately. If you just kind of slide a, a horizontal line below the market, you're going to have more and more players that are trapped at these high levels. And I think that a lot of people – have kind of thrown in the towel, and, and uh, one of the first shows that I did here with David uh, several weeks ago, or a couple of months ago, I guess now, somebody said, uh, brought up the point, where else are you going to go? And I think that I hear them, and, and, I, and it makes sense, but I think that at some point um, the, the it's going to end, and we won't have this eternal sunshine. So I've just been around for a while. I've, um, you know, have my ass handed to me enough to know that markets go up and markets go down. Okay. I had a, a, a client tell me when I was a broker in, in 99, and I was trying to get this big account. It was around 700000 and And he said to me, what do I need you for? All I got to do is buy an index fund. Yeah. And this was a year yeah. before the huge, huge sell-off. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. Yeah. And then we actually, I, you know, we had reports come out. They sent it over to us. They said, because there was a huge small cap deterioration before that happened, and I remember getting this report, and it was saying the way the small caps are moving compared to large caps was more than two standard deviations from the mean, which is a huge statistical move in one way that it just has to come back. You know, you, like you stretch this rubber band as far as it can possibly go, and then when there was that big deterioration, 2000, uh, the small caps, I believe were really rallying during that time, um, but the index fund is moved by the mega caps, you know. So when you when you have a couple people saying these things, like like they just said to you about the four hundred one k, I mean, I really really pay attention to that. I think that's that's the best indicator of all, really. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's go to uh, Larry for the uh, question four. Larry, what trading-related skills do you want to learn or improve in 2015, and how are you planning on improving these skills? Well, for 2015, uh, I've really kind of gotten into a lot of the seasonalities of markets, and so uh, I like to review, you know, kind of go through all the major market asset classes and look at them, you know, kind of based on a longer-term seasonality type basis, looking for those that are starting to maybe bottom or top out. So. You know, we've been having this huge move, you know, basically created by the Fed uh, since 2009, March of 2009, I believe, and it's been just a fantastic uptrend. So it's hard to get jump on these big uptrends, you know, when you're at the top. It doesn't mean that this thing can't keep going and going, but you have a hard time putting a lot of money to work at it. So what I want to do in 2015 is look for areas, other asset type classes, that are showing perhaps they're bottoming out where you can start easing into those suckers on with ETFs or 
some other type of ways, long-term options perhaps, and get in on, on a bottom cycle versus a top cycle. So um, that's what I'm going to be kind of focused on uh, really, really closely looking at a lot of different things there in 2015 based on seasonality and looking for those trends that are starting to develop from the downside, from the bottom turning up. So yeah, that's I fully agree. I was at an award ceremony uh, years ago when oil was supposedly going to go to $200 a barrel, and uh, they gave all these awards out to all these fund managers, and 9 out of 10 of them were energy fund managers, and I'm like, you know what? Next year they won't be getting an award because yeah. <laughs> because you know trust me it's not going to go up forever. So I fully agree with you. I think next year is going to be you know even gold maybe gold will bottom out in here over the next several months and it might be worthwhile and, yeah, and there's absolutely. quite a few other yeah some of these currencies that are that are just um, uh, super high in here may top out. So yeah I think that's the kind of year we might end up with. Okay Neil let's go to you. Um, what trading related skills do you want to learn or improve in 2015? And how are you planning on improving these skills? Um, probably I'm going to focus a lot on, on relative strength this year, um, stocks that are have, have really high relative strength compared to the market. Um, a lot of people think when the market rebounds, some of the weak stocks will rebound the most, but it's, it's actually not often true. Um, the strong stocks will rebound a lot with the market, so that's one of the things I'll be looking at. Uh, for my readers is the relative strength and um, yeah for the turnarounds God I, I just remember this quote saying trends can go was it trends can go further and last longer than anyone ever thinks possible so when you see gold going down 55 bucks yeah. you know, I, I just know there's a, these a lot of bottom fishers out there going for it and we actually talked about this a couple weeks on the show remember we we're saying don't bottom fish oil and now it's down again, so you be super careful on that bottom fishing. Oh, absolutely, and I, and I, that's that's a, I don't know who who originated the quotes, but that's a that's a quote I use quite often when we when bought oil. Thinks, I remember, I think it was I think it was 1985. We bought we were buying cargos of Brent crude for six dollars a barrel. Wow. <laughs> of course, it came from a different level. I mean, you know, crude now we're coming from 90.95 down here. Below 50, but at that point in time, the the highs were maybe 30 bucks. So you know, it's a it's relative, you know. Wow, that's interesting. Um, as far as me answering the question, um, years ago I worked with. Uh, I was lucky to hook up with a couple of old school guys, some people that have been around the block a time or two. And one thing that was interesting is they always seemed to be in the hottest market. I never did forget that. And it's like they were talking about home builders and I never traded a home builder in my life. I didn't even know what a home builder was until I started seeing home builders on their radar and all. So that was kind of a, uh, a wake up. So like we, I think everybody here already said, you know, anything that moves. And one thing that I'm going to continue to do is uh, I do some relative strength work at the deal uh, offline. I need to get in touch with you. Um, there's some, I don't want to get the, 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 the names and all wrong, but there's some, uh, a gentleman I know does a lot of relative strength work. You may want to look into his stuff. And uh, once I get the names, I'm, I'll mention it on the show. I just don't have his name in front of me. Um, but I'm definitely going to continue that momentum work. Uh, last year, and so far, knock on wood, this year, maybe not today, notwithstanding, uh, IPO market has been on fire. So I'm going to continue to watch for those markets. As far as getting better, uh, I want to make sure I'm capturing more of these moves. Sometimes I'll go home and uh, – I'll be frustrated. I'll tell my wife, oh, geez, it was on the radar, and I, and, I, and I actually missed it. And she'll say, well, at least it was on your radar. Well, that doesn't add to my bottom line. It makes me feel a little bit better. But uh, I do occasionally miss these. And that's one, one of the reasons, from a selfish standpoint, I have an educational business because it, force, it forces me to learn and to continue to learn and to pay attention to the markets. And I've caught in a lot of, a lot of days where I feel like, well, you know, this market is just crappy. I'm going to go home and, and have a beer. Uh, I'll sit here for two hours because they have clients dependent on me, and after those two hours, I'll say, well, you know what, it's not that bad, and there's some um, decent-looking stocks out there. So I uh, want to keep on catching these um, trends. I think you can never uh, fully conquer your emotions, the psychology side of trading, uh, but get a little bit better. So uh, sometimes I'll drop a couple of F-bombs, I'll go for a walk, and when I get back, the stocks have, uh, have already come back. So I'm going to try to not get too wrapped up in that and just focus on the longer term in the bigger picture. Okay, um, 
You guys, David, any uh, word from? You guys have any uh, anything you're seeing from your students or subscribers that uh, that people are saying they want to learn or uh, anything like that recently? Well, we've had a tremendous amount of interest, needless to say, in crude oil. Uh, you know, to see what's going to happen there. Is it time to get in? Is it not time to get in? So there's a tremendous amount of interest going around, just basically on the energy sector. So wanted to throw that out. So we're, you know, we're real focused on that right now too, because of that, because there is so much interest there. Okay. Uh, one thing that I'm seeing, and it just seems to be a reoccurring theme, and I actually wrote an article about it for Traders uh, Magazine, is uh, doing the right thing. And, and a lot of times people will do the wrong thing. They know they're doing the wrong thing, but they do it anyway. And I have a lot of clients that email me and tell me all their mistakes, and they knew ahead of time, like they'll see the market sell off a little bit like it is now, and they won't get stopped out of their positions, but they'll just panic, and they'll exit all their positions. Now, every now and then, that's the right thing to do, uh, because the market will roll over, but nine out of ten times, especially over the last several years, it hasn't. So the point I'm trying to make is following your plan. I think that's the biggest problem that people have is they don't want to plan ahead of time because as soon as you make a plan, you admit that you might be able to fail because you have to have a stop in place. And then uh, even if they do plan, they decide not to follow the plan. They either get out before the big move takes off or they hold on to their losers hoping that they'll come back. And it's just amazing that people do the wrong thing and they know they're still doing the wrong thing. They do it anyway. I guess Todd's not going to be able to make it, David. Yeah, I just got another text from him. Uh, yeah, apparently his um, his internet is is down in his office right now. He's okay. trying to get it working again, but uh, looks like it's it's not happening right now. So, uh, well, maybe so I'll we, try to have him on maybe, uh, in the future sometime. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sorry about that, um, Todd. Would love to have heard from you. Okay. Um, Larry, any closing thoughts uh, about uh, the markets or anything, and uh, anything else you want to mention about uh, PowerCycleTrading.com? Uh, well, I like your comment about planning your trade and following your plan. That's that's really important because uh, you know you'll get into a situation you think you, what I want want to do and what I try to teach my members and clients is you know be very selective on your trade setups. There's always going to be a trade. And then you know, follow your plan and don't over trade. A lot of times people start over trading, especially when you, especially when you're doing well, you can over trade, or when you're not doing well, you can really over trade trying to catch back up. So, be very selective. And to be selective, a lot of times the best way to be selective is have a really good trading system that you can follow that gives you rules and that you can rely on those rules to take some of the emotion out of your trading. So if you can do that, if you find a trading system or a methodology that you like. Paper trade it and then trade it with you know small volume to get confident in the system. Once you have confidence, then that's going to brew success. So that's I like to throw that out there. And if you like to you know learn more about my my site, it's PowerCycleTrading.com. I do a lot of educational courses on trading options, and we've got a really great trading model that we use, plus a scanner for finding trades. So I like to throw that out. Cool. Yeah, Larry. You know one of the things that uh that came up from the audience is that there's not enough controversy on this show. I, I fully agree with everything you said. A lot of good, uh, a lot of good thoughts in there. Uh, did we lose Neil or is, um, he come back on? Yeah, it looks uh, like Walt. lost Neil too. I think he's logging back on now. He may have, he may have fallen asleep. It's 1 a.m. over there. So, um, let's just see if he comes right back in. Well, we're waiting on Neil to come back. Uh, closing thoughts for me. Um, I, I have a lot of free educational material on my website. You could spend hours going through that um, if you're interested. And I have a lot of videos on my YouTube channel, so check those out. And as mentioned earlier, I have a free report, 21-page uh, report on the methodology. And also, um, if you're interested in a bow tie pattern, which I'm talking about, I'll be happy to send you that pattern too, so just let me know. Uh, Neil, are you back with us? Looks like he's coming back in. It looks like he's he's in the room, but it's not 
fully loading or something. <laughs> he may be falling asleep. Yeah. <laughs> Might just be uh, internet connection problems on the... Everyone's having internet problems today, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's a bummer, yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, David, I guess um, you want me to throw it back to you and you wrap things up, or what do you, what do you want to do? Uh, yeah, unless uh, unless you guys have anything else uh, you want to mention or talk about. Well, I think that, um, you know... The, the, I want the seasonality part of things. Uh, you, we are due for a pullback, and if you look for the at seasonals and the probabilities of what happens, what I what I see is that uh, I mentioned this a little bit earlier is when you start getting towards that mid part of January, going into option expiration, that's when in the past we've seen a shift on, on a pullback. It doesn't necessarily mean the markets are just going to tank and crater, but on a seasonal pattern, that's when it tends to happen. We do get that pullback. Before it starts moving back up, if it's going to, you know, go go higher back in the future, you know, down the down the road in the future. So just keep an eye on that. Uh, we're we're starting a little bit early this week. If we get a bounce back up because of non-farm payroll, uh, be careful going into the middle part of January. Okay. okay. I guess the only other thing I would say is um, I wrote about in a column this morning. Just keep an eye on the net net price change. In other words, where's the price? today and then look back a few weeks and a few months and that's a very powerful type of thing and if we continue to drop in here then we're going to have a lot of prices above where we are and that's going to create a lot of overhead supply in the market so I think it's important for us to uh, to get back to new highs soon in here okay David uh, back to you okay um, well for everyone watching I uh, just want to remind you if you haven't had a chance to take a look at uh, this current report, or if you'd like to look at any previous reports, just go to timingresearch.com slash reports. Um, you can also go to timingresearch.com slash raw data to download all the all the data from all the different weeks. Um, and uh, be sure to go to timingresearch.com slash current survey next weekend to fill out uh, this week's survey. And I um, just want to thank Dave Landry of DaveLandry.com for hosting for me again. And I want to thank Larry Gaines of PowerCycleTrading.com for, for being on first time. And Neil Batho of TraderReview.net. And Todd Mitchell of TradingConceptsInc.com. Sorry, uh, Todd wasn't be able to be on. He's, he's been a longtime friend of mine. And uh, so we'll, we'll try to get him on again in the future sometime. And uh, so that's it. Uh, thanks, guys. Thank you, Okay, David. well, thanks very much.